Alleluia Ministries International is a Bible-believing and Christ-centered church. We believe Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His power is still at work in the church today, just as it was in the time of the Bible. We are AMI. Give me the double portion of your spirit meant give me what you yourself in your lifetime never had. Because I have only 1,000, but you want me to give you 2,000. All I have is 1,000, but you are asking me to give you 2,000. Ladies and gentlemen, there are men and women who are crazy in God. What I like with faith is that uh, faith gives God no limit. God is absolute. God is supreme. God is sovereign. God cannot be stopped by time. He cannot be stopped by circumstances. God is big. God is great. There is nothing too hard for him to do. He asked for what Elijah did not have. Why? Because through asking that, he was not just looking at Elijah. He was looking at who gave Elijah what Elijah had. This is a presentation of Alleluia Ministries International. Lift your hand, Father, we thank you, we bless you. We bless your name because you are God. We bless your name because none is like you. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Before you, angels bow in adoration to who you are. So as a people, we have come. We have come to adore you. We have come to elevate you. We have come to exalt you, O oh God. And we have come with our heart open. Our lives lay before you that you may have your way through us. We pray. Bless us. Bless your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please have a seat. Pursuing. A higher anointing. Lift your hands, Lord. Help me in this pursuit of a higher anointing. In Jesus' name. Second Kings 2 9 to 10. The Bible reads, And so it was when they had crossed over. That Elijah said to Elisha, ask what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. The word of the Lord. A verse that we read countless times. Remarkable story that reveals how things happen as one pursues the anointing. Elijah, the prophet of fire, a servant of God in his time, who walked with the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power, Elijah, the one used by God to bring to the end the reign of Baal and Asherah that uh, led confusion, led Israel into confusion in Israel. When in the Mount Carmel, he called on fire and fire came down. A man of great insight, a man of great power, dedicated in prayer. We see him on the mountaintop praying with his head between his legs. A man who knew God and walked with God. He had a servant, a disciple, a trainee, a young man called Elisha. All this young man wanted was to be like his spiritual father. The Bible says, a son does only what he sees his father do. Elisha's desire was that God may use him like his spiritual father. I can picture this young man seeing with a, a great admiration 
how God's hand moved through his spiritual father how God demonstrated great grace and glory through this man of God so he had developed that desire to become one like his spiritual father and even more and in the story the Bible say God had revealed not only to Elijah but also to the prophet of the time the sons of the prophet that it was time for Elijah to be taken to heaven he didn't die a common death God decided to take him and ladies and gentlemen this is not a myth I know that today in the platforms of those of us today intellectuals a story of a man who has been taken to heaven seems somehow uh, too mythic to be acceptable but this is the word of God this man did not die a natural death he was taken he was raptured and as the news was already in the spirit of many who were aligned with God the Lord spoke to Elijah I believe to address something in the heart of his spiritual son he said ask what I may do for you everywhere I went you were with me you did not leave me a day so now it is time for you to be rewarded may I stretch my hand and pray for a season of reward that God in this season may reward you for every labor you have labored for every seed you have sown for every work you have worked may you enter into a season of reward may it be so in the name of Jesus uh, kindly have a seat so he asked him what do you want me to do for you and the Bible says, Elisha said, please let me have double portion of your spirit. Some versions say, let double portion of your spirit come upon me. He had asked for the spirit of Elijah. Now it is important for you to understand that when he was talking about your spirit, he was talking about the anointing. He was not talking about the human spirit because there is only one human spirit for everybody and that you are your spirit. You are not a soul. You are a spirit who has a soul and lives in the body. So when he was saying, let me have double of your spirit, he was meaning, can I please have double, two times, an increase of what you have now if you open your eyes and begin to analyze this slowly you'll begin to understand that this young man was too ambitious his ambition in God was not wicked it was through the high level of his faith and trust that God cannot be stopped and God has no limit that he asked according to many with a little exaggeration now i want to push you a little bit i know you have been asking god to give you money to pay your rent but i'm gonna push you a little bit why not ask god for the house if god is able to provide for your rent money he is able to provide for you to be an owner now in the wings of the prophetic right now may I declare over somebody that as your father in heaven is a landlord you will no longer be a tenant in the name of Jesus I say as your father in heaven is a landlord you will no longer be a tenant in the name of Jesus uh, please I have a seat I, I don't want us to move away from what God is uh, saying right now he asked for something very ambitious give me double portion of your spirit meant give me what you yourself in your lifetime never had because I have only 1000 but you want me to give you 2000 all I have is 1000 
but you are asking me to give you 2,000. Ladies and gentlemen, there are men and women who are crazy in God. One I like with faith is that uh, faith gives God no limit. God is absolute. God is supreme. God is sovereign. God cannot be stopped by time. He cannot be stopped by circumstances. God is big. God is great. There is nothing too hard for him to do. He asked for what Elijah did not have. Why? Because through asking that, he was not just looking at Elijah. He was looking at who gave Elijah what Elijah had. And he had believed in his heart that if this God is able to give this much to his servant, surely he can give me an increase. You are about to go where your father has never been. You are about to go where your mother has never been. You are about to do what nobody in your family ever did. There is a pioneering anointing that will flow in this place. An anointing for the first time. The anointing for the first... You, you will be the first time, the first one to do what you will do. I'm prophesying right now. I am declaring it right now. You'll be the first to own so many cars in your family. You'll be the first one to have 1,000 employees in your company. You'll be the first one in parliament in your family. You'll be the first one breaking through in your family. You will develop your father's house. You will build a house for your parents, for your grandparents. You will do what the world has never seen before. There is a pioneering anointing that is befalling somebody under the sound of my voice. If it is you I'm talking to, may you make a loud shout of praise unto God. Now, please, I have a seat. He said, give me double of your spirit. Verse 10, Elijah, after processing what this young man had just requested, the Bible says, say you have asked a hard thing. You have asked a hard thing. There are things that are easy. There are things that are hard. There are ministries that are easy. There are ministries that are hard. There are practices that are easy and there are practices that are hard. There are assignments that are easy and there are assignments that are hard. Ignoring it does not change its fact. Thinking that everything is the same, it is a great illusion. In the kingdom of God, you must understand seasons and levels. Things that God does in the kingdom are all locked within seasons and levels. He said, you have asked a hard thing. It might be that yesterday his request was not this hard. But now what you are asking, you are asking something hard. You are asking what I don't have. You are asking what probably I had desired to have, but I did not operate in. You are asking to do for God what nobody in your town ever did for him before. You are asking a hard thing. It is normal to ask a car that the bank may pay for it and you pay them bit by bit. But now you're not asking for a car. You are asking to own the showroom. Makoto Moyeba Basete. You are asking to own a garage. You are asking not just to have a flat in a certain estate. You are asking to be the main shareholder in that real estate company. You are asking a hard thing. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but there is somebody here whose faith is great and that you are about to ask us something great. 
there is a generation locked in small things. Everything they fight for is small. Everything they live for is small. Everything they battle to have is small. They say, if you give me a roof over my head and bread on my table, I will be fulfilled. There is a generation who is satisfied by the minimum. They are masters of the minors. The major in minors. Everything that is small is indicative to them that God is there. Whenever this generation sees something big, they are intimidated. Uh, they feel it's too much, too good to be true. They are pushed in the corner. They want to hide in the den. This generation is a generation that runs away from God. They have reduced God to a small thing. When they talk and relate to their God, though they may sing big, but the relation to this God revealed that the God in the mind and spirit is a small God. A small God who cannot even heal a common flu. Unable to heal sicknesses such as cancer, uh, HIVs, and all kinds of things. We, we, we relate to God in small. But this young man, Elisha, Refuse to be locked in small. Refuse to be intimidated by what is big. Say to God, asking his servant, Elijah, give me double of the spirit that is in you. God sent me to lead his people to a higher anointing. Men of God, servant of God, woman of God, child of God, the Lord wants you to open up to bigger. There are bigger things that God has in store for you. I, I, I try to say this side. There, there, there are bigger things that God has in store for you. Let me come deeper and speak to somebody. There, there, there are bigger things that God has in store for you. One of the plan of the enemy was to stop you from dreaming. The devil doesn't want you to dream again. The devil wants you to make peace with the fact that uh, this is your life and it will end here. But the devil is a liar. Who am I talking to? The devil is a liar. The Lord has given me an assignment today to lead his people to a better place, a greater place, a place of the overflow, a place of abundance where everything is very big. You will no longer be insignificant in your work, no. You will no longer be unnoticed in your place, no. Everywhere you go, you will shine. I say you will shine. Who am I talking to? Give Jesus Christ the craziest praise you have. You have asked a hard thing. Ah, God. Some of you have to change your prayers. You gotta change it all together. It is not fitting you to pray the way you've been praying. It is, it, it is an insult to God the way you've been asking. Elisha was not one to mess up with. He knew who he was and what he wanted. He asked for something big. Something big. Lord, my knee is a problem. My hip is a problem. My stone is a problem, but my neck is so. Bit by bit, heal my knee today. Someday, my hips will be fire on you. <laughs> Caleb! Ask God. Though he was old, he said to Moses, Give me this mountain. You are about to do exploit with God. Hey, I don't know who I'm speaking to. But somebody is about to do exploit with God. You are about to do exploit with God. The 
the reason why you will not die is because your assignment is not over yet. I said the reason why you will not die now is because your assignment is not over yet. You are about to pull heaven down. You are about to pull heaven down. Through you the world will know that there is a God in heaven. And he is the same yesterday, today and forever. You have asked a hard thing. Every prayer request that you have presented to God today. May the Lord I serve answer by fire and may God bring the answer to manifestation instantly in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Give somebody a prophetic high five and seal, seal it, seal it. Seal it. Seal it. Be sure to tune in next time for the continuation of this preaching. In the beginning, we have seen the hand of God move. And the hand of God still moves today. There are things that you have to do to tap into a great anointing. Uh, just like many great men of God around the world, you will hear people come to you and say, Please give me what you have. Well, because as human, you, you have feelings and your feelings may uh, uh, cling to this one better than the other one but even when your feelings will cling to this one and you like the way it speaks you like the way it serves you and you say take it though it falls under the power the assignment for him to have it manifest requires certain things if you were blessed by this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can catch Pastor Alf Lukau on AMI TV on the public bouquet or on our live stream on AMITV.com. You can follow Pastor Alf Lukau on all social media platforms at Alf Lukau.